Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbara. This is AP Physics Chapter 2, Video 2. Today's topic is instantaneous velocity. The objectives for today is to know the meaning of instantaneous velocity, differentiate between speed with velocity, be able to find instantaneous velocity on xt graph. Instantaneous velocity is defined as the velocity at any specific instant of time or specific point along the path. An instant refers to a single value of time. Instantaneous velocity is a vector quantity. Its magnitude is the speed and its direction is direction of motion. Consider a car moving from P1 to P2. To determine instantaneous velocity, let's look at first at average velocity. We use the equation V average equals delta x over delta t to determine the average velocity between P1 and P2. To determine the instantaneous velocity at point P1, we move the second point P2 closer and closer to point P1 and compute the average velocity V average equals delta x over delta t over the ever shorter displacement and time interval. So we get this equation. Velocity at P1 is the average velocity when the delta t approaches to zero at P1. So in this equation, both delta x and delta t becomes very small, but their ratio does not necessarily become small. Instantaneous velocity is a derivative. So in the language of calculus, the limit delta x over delta t as delta t approaches to zero is called the derivative of x with respect to t and is written as dx over dt. The instantaneous velocity is the limit of the average velocity as the time interval approaches to zero. It equals to instantaneous rate of change of position with time. So something over time is the rate. So it's written as the average velocity as the limit uh, delta t approaches to zero. It is the same as dx over dt. Speed versus velocity. We refer instantaneous velocity or speed as velocity or speed. So when we talk about determinant velocity, we mean determinant instantaneous velocity. So instantaneous velocity is a vector quantity. Its direction is the same as direction of motion, and, some, and its magnitude is the speed at that instant. So it can never be negative. However, the magnitude of average velocity is not always equal to the average speed. For example, when Alexander Popov set a world record in 1994 by swimming 100 meters in 46.74 seconds, his average speed was 2.139 meters per second. But because he swam four length in 25 meter pool, he started and ended at the same point and he had zero total displacement and a zero average velocity. So as you can see, average speed and average velocity can be different. Let's take a look at this example. A cheetah is crouched 20 meters to the east of an observer's vehicle. At time t equals to zero, the cheetah charges an antelope and begins to run along a straight line. During the first two seconds of attack, the cheetah's coordinate x varies with time according to this equation. x equals 20 meters plus 5t squared. Find a displacement of cheetah between t1 equals to 1 second and t2 equals to 2 seconds. Displacement is a change in position. So we find a position at t equals to 2 seconds and at t equals to 1 second and we subtract. So position at t equals to 2, we simply substitute 2 in this equation. Similarly, for t equals to 1 second and we get 50 meters east. Find average velocity during the same time interval. Average velocity is displacement over time. So displacement is 50 meters over time is 1 second. So we have 50 meters per second east. Next, to find instantaneous velocity at time t equals to 1 second by taking the time interval delta t equals to 0 0.1 seconds, then delta t equals to 0 0.01 seconds, then delta t equals to 0 0.001 0 .001 seconds. Remember, instantaneous velocity basically is the average velocity as delta t approaches to zero. So this question is essentially asking you what is the average velocity at between t equals to 1 second and t equals to 1.1 seconds. That's the first part. 
Second part, what is the average velocity between one second and 1.01 second, and so forth. So for this question, all directions are going to the east. So what is the average velocity between t equals to 1.1 second and t equals to uh, between t equals to 1 second to t equals to 1.1 seconds? We have to find the difference in the displacement between the two time. Then we use displacement divided by time. We have 10.5. Next one, what is the average velocity between t equals to 1 second to t equals to 1.01 1 .01 second? Again, we find the displacement by using the same equation, and we get 10.05 seconds. Lastly, we find the average uh, velocity between t equals to 1.001 second to t equals to 1 second, we have 10.005 meters per second. As you can see, as delta t approaches to uh, 0, you can guess the average velocity probably close to 10. So let's see if we can derive a general expression for instantaneous velocity as a function of time. And from it, to find a vx at t equals to 1 and t equals to 2, see if it will come to be the same as we got for part C. For uh, instantaneous uh, velocity, that is the average velocity, as time equals approaches to zero. So at t equals to uh, uh, t plus uh, delta t, we substitute that into the equation, then substitute t into the equation, this is what we get. 20 plus 5 t plus delta t squared minus 20 plus 5t squared. That is the displacement. Use that divided by t. We open this up. 20 and 20 cancels. So we get 5 times t squared plus 2t delta t plus delta t squared minus t squared. In this case, t squared and a negative t squared cancels. So we'll have the, uh, the one, only the two terms right in the middle. But delta t and delta t cancels, and here's one of the t, delta t cancels. So inside we have 10t plus 5 delta t. In this case, as delta t approaches to 0, this second term becomes 0. So instantaneous velocity becomes 10t. This is the general expression of velocity as a function of time. So from this expression, we can find vx at t equals to 1. At t equals to 1, velocity is just 10 times 1, so velocity is 10 meters per second. It looks like we have the same as part c. At t equals to 2 seconds, velocity equals to 20 meters per second. Finding velocity in xt graph. So we figure out the average velocity is the slope of this line between the two points. So as the average velocity is calculated over shorter and shorter time interval, its value, delta x over delta t, approaches to the instantaneous x velocity. And eventually, the instantaneous velocity at any given point is equal to the slope of tangent to the xt curve at that point. So as this line of p2 approaches to p1, the slope of this green line becomes tangent. So slope of tangent equals to instantaneous x velocity. As you can see, average velocity in this case is 75, then 55 eventually becomes 40, closer and closer to P1. That's because the slope equals to rise over run, and as the delta t becomes to zero, this becomes the slope of the tangent line at P1. So velocity equals to the slope of tangent. Take a look at the graph A. This is a curve for uh, position versus time. So the slope at point A represents velocity at A. Same, same thing for slope at B represents velocity at B. Let's take a look at a particle's motion. At A, slope is positive, so velocity is positive. At B, slope is still positive, but the velocity is much bigger because slope is bigger. At point C, slope equals to zero, so there is no velocity. 
at D, slope is negative, so velocity becomes negative. At E, velocity is also negative, but D has a bigger slope, so D has bigger magnitude than E. The steeper the slope, either positive or negative, uh, object xt graph, the greater the object speed in the positive or negative direction. Check your understanding 2.2. According to the graph, rank the value of particles x velocity vx at a point P, Q, R, and S. So this one is asking you from the most positive to most negative. So most positive is P. Then uh, the slope Q is 0, so is S. So P, Q is the same as S. R is the most negative. You have PQ equals to S, then R. At what point is VX positive? At point P. At what point is VX negative? At R. At which point VX equals to zero? Q and S. Because the slope is zero. Rank the value of the particle's speed. Now, speed is the steepness of the slope. So R is the biggest, then it's P. Q and S both equals to zero. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.